Hey guys, this is Bobby here again. Um, just wanted to continue with the previous um, video that I posted on the natural dynamic range. This time I wanted to talk about how um, I also use a luminosity mask in um, manual blending for my HDR images. So I, um, I'm not a big fan of using um, any of the HDR software like Photomatics or um, HDR Pro or one of those. What, what I like to do is really blend them manually and I use luminosity mask to blend them. Um, so just to get started, so I've got these five images, um, 5163, 64, 65, 66 and 67 that I shot in Singapore. By the way, this also has that starburst that, you know, I think I've been asked a lot of questions about. Um, um, so, I, well, so here's the thing, right? I, I don't create this. This is how I shoot them. Uh, but anyway, coming back to the HDR part of it. So the way I've shot them is this is shot. If you can see the EV value is, is, is what camera metered. Um, this is at minus one. I think uh, this is at minus two. This is at minus three. This is at minus four. All right. So what I do is select all of them. Uh, open them in camera raw um, so I get all of those five images what I do at this point in time with the camera raw I actually do is just only one thing and that is to adjust the uh, temperature or the white balance um, and I kind of uh, make that even throughout all the five images so the way I do it is you know a standard stuff depending on how I want to do it so let's just say for this image let me first go do ash sorry uh, as shot and then make it a little warmer Okay, so let's just say at this point in time. And then what I do is I come, I select all, and I synchronize only the white balance. Um, so I pick up uh, white balance. All right, so I've got white balance, and I say okay. All of them get, uh, all of them have the same white balance uh, reading right now. Then select all and open images. Now, there is a trick, there's a way to open all five images. Uh, as, as different layers in Photoshop. I still haven't figured that out yet. Uh, and if anybody knows how to do it, just let me know how to do it. Um, all right, so once I've got all my five images opened up, the next thing I do is to line them up in such a way that I have the brightest image right at the bottom. The last layer is the brightest image. And I have the darkest image at the top. So in this case, assuming 5, 1, 6, 7, this one is the brightest image. And let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so we've got all five images. Let's see which is the darkest, right? So let, this is the darkest, or this is the darkest. And this is the second darkest. So what I will do is I'll just copy them quickly onto 5, 1, 6, 7 as layer. All right, and I'll keep closing these. Don't save, then I think it's the, this one, right? Yeah, it's this one, same thing, duplicate layer, uh, onto 5167, close this out, uh, then which is the next one? Um, this is the next one, again, duplicate layer, onto 5167, close that out. I know this is not a very uh, efficient way of doing it, I still haven't figured out how else to do it, so you know, I would really appreciate if anybody knows this a better way to do it on Photoshop and camera raw. I know it's it's easier done in uh, Lightroom, but I don't use Lightroom. All right, so here I've got all the five images stacked. Uh, and as you can see, this is the darkest one. This is the lighter one, lighter and the lightest. Okay, so obviously the, the idea is that you would want to retain the, the maximum uh, details on the highlight from this image while you bring down the other dynamic range through this. So if you look at this image, this part is all blown out, right? It's all, it's like all burnt out. Um, and, and there's, and, and the sun is also very dark. So what we, what I'm going to do very quickly is using luminosity mask, I'm just going to preserve this part, this part and this part, because as again, just, just to go back and just concentrate on this part, this is really blown out on my last image. This is completely gone. And so is so are these areas. Right, so that's what we'll intend to do. Now, I, I'm not going to talk about um, luminosity mask and how to create and all of that. I'm just going to show you how I do the blending. So your understanding of creating luminosity mask and working with them is a basic assumption for this video. Now, I can there is, of course, TK that you can use. Uh, and in TK, it's very simple. If you go to basic action and you pick lights, it'll pick up this light and you work on that. But for this video, what I will do is I'll actually show how you can create a grounds up 
So obviously you go to your channel um, simply on uh, Mac do a command and I think on Windows it's control R control click on these right and then you can see the marching ants coming out here right you see this marching ant and it has picked up the bright areas right which is what we want to do once you have these selected you want to save this as a channel let's call this light at this point in time go and click your RGB back now while this is still selected what I will do now is do a control D or command D to deselect the selection it is deselected I go to my layers using option or alt key I think in Windows and in, in, in Mac it's option I do a right click on a new layer and it fills up with sorry uh, I do a control uh, alt or option key with uh, the layer mask all right and it creates a black layer um, and this is what I want. I want to fill the, the uh, layer mask with a black layer. Going back to the channels, I'm going to load this light. So that's command and click on light. And you can see these, these are back here again. Right. Um, and what you can do, you can do two things. You can go back to your layer. And if you don't like to see this marching ants, with the selection still on, you press command or control H, which is for hide. And this marching ants, ants will hide. So you do that control H, the commands, the, the, it hides the marching and, but the selection is still on. And then using white as your foreground, you start to paint, all right? So let's see, um, all right? And let's just reduce our opacity to, I don't know, maybe 30 and you paint. And you paint it like, you know, around the whole area. All right, I think that's good enough for right now. Maybe I'll just increase the brush stroke to about 70 and paint this area one more time to get a little more dye. All right, now with this uh, still selected, what I'm gonna do is um, Control D to deselect that um, selection that I have. Control D pressed and to unmerge these, Control E. All right, so that has merged the details of my first layer which had the maximum details in the highlight onto my second layer where highlight should have been or was or was a little blown out or clipped all right so now with the details already here from my first image what i'm going to do now obviously is to you know kind of merge the next layer right so same thing go back here we're done with this light channel so i can delete this go back here control click it chooses the whites again this time if you see it's not just choosing this and this, it's also choosing here and here and parts here, parts here, parts here and parts here. So it's, it's choosing a lot more, right? You see a lot of selection here. All right, so same thing again. Um, you want to save this. Um, this time I'll just let it call L alpha. Go back to layers, control D to deselect. Option and new layer mask, black layer. Uh, go back to channels, control, click on alpha and your selections is back. Go back to layers, hide the selection, control H, and then with the white as a foreground, paint. All right, so let me reduce the brush stroke back to 40, and I paint. Um, so by the way, I'm using my Wacom, and I'm learning a lot of new things with this as well. It definitely gives me a lot more precision in what I want to do. Okay, uh, let me just increase it to 70 and get it done. All right, so that's what I wanted to do. So you can see the selection here, you, know, you can see these white spots. These are the ones which it has brought down from my fourth layer and it's gonna bring it down to my third layer. Control D at this point in time to deselect the selection. You can't see the marching ants, but the marching ant has, is still in the background, so it's still active in selection. You wanna deactivate that, so you'll do a Control D and Control E. To merge that you will do the same thing all over again you don't need alpha you bring it down delete control click okay this time selection is more right so it's going all the way up till here to select that right and not just here not just here it's all over all right so let's save it again um, go back to layer control D deselect option and new mask go back to channels Load the channel control or uh, command click 
go back to layers, control H to hide the marching ants, and then you paint again using P. Uh, let me reduce this back to 40. And let's bring back those details again. All right, here we go. And, and this for this tutorial, what I'm going to do quickly is to actually show you. Uh, in reality, I would do this very slow and easy brush. Uh, but this is one of the radical images. So it's easier to show you the effect very quickly um, if I use a very, um, you know, brush stroke with a lot more opacity. All right, so here we go. So I've got this again. Um, so before and after, a lot more details have come. Again, Control D, deselect, Control E, merge. Go back to channel, delete this alpha, control click, a lot more selection this time. All over here, the water is also was also being clipped in this image, so it's preserving all of that. Save, um, layer, control D, option and mask, go to channels, load the alpha, go to layers, uh, do control H, and then paint. And this time you will see that it will really bring those details out from my first image, uh, from my last layer, sorry. All right, let's just paint this all the way right now. All right, so there you go. Um, and this is how I would do a manual blending um, for my HDR images. Now, uh, in, in this method, there is a lot more, you know, a lot more control that I have on how I want to bring out the details or preserve the detail versus automating it or using um, one of those uh, HDR automators like Photomatix. It, 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 I mean, at least I don't like it. Again, Control D and Merge. Now. Let me just show you how this image looks versus how this image was as the, sorry, not this one. Um, I've, got, I've got a lot of selection. So yeah, let's just choose this one. All right, and as it was. Um, let's just, all right, so you see a lot more light here, a lot less right here. Of course, the, the I, I still need to work on the contrast. So what I do at this point, let me just close this one out. Um, what I would do at this point in time is actually I'll save this as um, PSD. Uh, let's just save it here. I already have a PSD that I saved earlier, so I'll just save that. And what I will do actually is I will open this PSD, which is I think 515617 or something. Um, or is it 5167? And I'll open it as camera raw. Uh, this time when I bring it up, uh, this is the HDR blended image already, right? So what I do is then I can adjust my contrast or shadows maybe a bit more, bring back highlights if I want to bring that, adjust temperatures a little more. Again, depends completely on the image to image. I'm just, again, an example here, add vibration, vibrance, and I'm ready to work on this image. All right, this looks pretty good. Maybe a little more clipped here so I can go back on using... Um, you know, bringing more uh, details out of the highlight if I want. But for now, uh, I think this image looks good. So this is how I would work on uh, natural dynamic range using uh, luminosity mask for my HDR images. I don't use any HDR software to do it. All right, hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think about it.